Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Encore, where we have candid conversations about the practical applications of Sunday's message. Well, hey, everyone, we are back for another episode of Sunday Encore, where we sit down to recall the truths of Sunday's message and consider some practical applications to our everyday lives. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're a regular listener of the pod, I would love to encourage you to like, share, subscribe, give us a five-star rating, send the link to someone. It would greatly help us reach more people with the message of Jesus. We are here a little bit later in the week, but that's okay. It's a busy week. It's a busy week. We've got some incredible things that have happened, but some pretty awesome things coming up. We're getting ready. It's uh, Vision Sunday. Vision Sunday. We're launching the new ministry year. There he is. There we go. There you go. Uh, Yeah, so excited about that. We are launching two services. Let's go. This Sunday. It's been awesome. I... It's been uh, encouraging to see our numbers grow, especially these last, you know, well, the last year, but these last several weeks, we've seen numbers at sort of record highs. 100%. Which is kind of encouraging and reminding all of us yeah. that this is the right step. Yeah. You Thank know? you, Jesus. So, which is good. <laughs> for confirmation. You know, anytime you do something new, it's, uh, there's, there's a, an element of faith yep. and an element of, are we sure? But uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I believe it's going to be the right move for us as a church to make room for more people and, and, um, so yeah, so nine and eleven identical services. Harbor Kids operating both minist- both services, Let's full ministry. Go. It's gonna be awesome. So uh, be here and weather permitting, we're getting ready for a big barbecue after service. Just yep. talking about that today, like maybe 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 we need a rain date. Yeah, maybe yeah, we yeah. need a rain date because the weather is not looking too favorable. So ask Jesus to blow the that west wind <laughs> and take those clouds <laughs> no somewhere chills, else. <laughs> hey? You don't like the weather in the Bruce County? Just wait ten minutes. Yeah, you know? but. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're getting ready for a great weekend, the launch of a new ministry year. We've got small groups building up right now, getting ready to launch small groups in the fall. So and then um, we got more groups this semester than we've ever had. Amazing. It's unbelievable. Praise and God. And so it's exciting. God's doing great work in our church and through our people. And yeah, I can't believe summer's over. We're into spring. Kids are back to school. It's just. It's different, man. We're in it, man. Summer went. We're in it. We're in it. Yeah. And uh, throughout the summer, we um, obviously, if you've been listening, have gone through this series, Let's Talk About It, which has been amazing. It's been so cool to respond to people's questions, um, comments, big, heavy topics yeah. um, about life and faith and um, being obedient to God. And it's been really, really beautiful. And it's kind of been nice. Um, I, I like having a succinct thought throughout a month or five weeks or something yeah. like that. But it's kind of been nice to have kind of one offs, little little focused attention on one idea, one topic. 100%. It's been cool. Yeah, a little bit of a different vibe. Um, and they've been just banging after the other one after the other. It's been so good. It's been fun. It's, it's been, been a, different. It's been a heavy. Awesome. Su- it's been a different topic. Number t- you know, last few summers we've always kept it light, like yeah. summer than the Psalms yeah, or yeah, yeah. summer playlist, yeah, and keeping yeah, yeah. it light. And um, we yeah, went in. We went into the. Deep we went end. in the river. Just making us work. You know, <laughs> um, it's been good though. And we had that succinct thought though that discovering truth is possible in a world of yeah. confusion. So that's sort of been the thread that's kind of held this conversation together. Yeah. Um, and I think we've been doing that. I think we have been discovering truth. And I think absolutely. I think we've been identifying the truth that maybe sometimes we believe deeply but don't know how to articulate. Mm-hmm. And so it's like putting some words to that a little yeah. bit. Um, and just or just creating conversation. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's one thing. I, one thing I do love, and I think it's really important, is when you present the truth to actually have that conversation. And you know, sometimes it's going to rub against kind of the cultural norm that you have that we have sort of just adopted as normal. Yeah, but not necessarily true or yep. not necessarily biblical. Right. And so there's been a rub, and there's like a contrast. And yep. now you're forced to discuss that and right. to rustle through that and. And um, and I think that's been good. And I've and totally. It's, I've heard people have those conversations. I've had those conversations with people, and they rustle through some of these things. And it's been cool to have a space too to um, talk about truths that we all know are true, but we don't really know what to do with them. Mm-hmm. And to have some actually genuine practical, which is, this is you're so good at this, genuine practical steps of how do I actually like know this truth and apply it to this messed up, confusing world that I yeah. live in yeah. as a Christian. What does that look like? And I think from my 
vantage point, we've done that very well. And yeah. you've done that very well. Thank you. In giving us opportunity of how to like actually chew and, and work through how do I mm-hmm. take this truth and apply it to my life and live in it, like yeah. genuinely live in it. Um, and that's been awesome. Yeah. I think that's one thing I do appreciate about Jesus's ministry is that we see that Jesus was full of grace and truth. Yeah. And so, you know, he was full of truth, but he led with grace. And every interaction that Jesus had with people where he revealed truth to them, which again, when he reveals truth, that there's usually change that follows. Mm-hmm. Um, but he always led with grace. And I think, you know, I think this conversation is really important to have where we are gracious. Yeah. You know, the same grace that we have freely received, we need to extend to others. Amen. As we discover truth together and realize that truth is connected to the person, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the closer you get to Jesus, the closer you re- he reveals truth in you. Mm-hmm. And instead of us having to point the finger at the things that are untrue mm-hmm. in people's lives, uh, or deception, or you know, mis mis truth, or you know, we can, the Spirit of God will do that yeah. the closer we get to Him. Point them so, to Jesus. So that's been really, really good, and so uh, I've enjoyed that. I do believe that love compels us to be clear, yeah. and in a world of confusion, clarity is really key. Is really important. It's and not so, a common value, yeah, because. If truth is abstract or subjective, yeah. then how could you be truly clear about anything? Yeah, truth is connected to situations at this point where it's just right. like you're constantly evolving, and that's not really truth. You can't build a house on a ground that's constantly changing. No. And so you crumble. You crumble, <laughs> and that's what's happening to society. That's what's happening to a generation who's full of anxiousness and worry because they have no foundation to build their life upon. It's Absolutely. just eroded. The truth, yep. you know? And so, you know, we grew up, and I mean, I'm not that much older than than you and 20 years older than you and you're not much older than the next generation underneath you but yeah. there's been even even in those those generations the cup the, the foundation the firmness of a cup that knowledge was poured into kind of held the knowledge that we could kind of yeah. you know, contain it yeah and kind of identify but we've sort of eroded the cup but we're still pouring in knowledge so it's like it's just all over the place and we're like mm, wondering why people aren't holding on to it or why there's not why there's nothing Grab, there's nothing for them to, to contain it. Yeah, and we just need to go back to the truth again. The truth is not subjective; it's objective. The truth is found in the Word of God. The yeah. truth is connected to the Word of God. It yeah. is the Word of God. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah. So we're just kind of having that, and again, understanding that love compels us to be clear. Yeah. And so, while we want to be full of grace, absolutely we do. We also need to be full of truth. Yeah. And um, the best way we can love people is be truthful to the Word of God. So we're in that. So this week we talked about a real awesome topic that everyone loves talking about as we talked about the idea of suffering, kind of answering this age old question that, you know, why does good things happen to bad people or why does bad things rather happen to good people? Why does a good God allow suffering or hardship or the problem? It's really the problem of pain that we have a hard time getting our head wrapped around. It's C.S. Lewis who said, you know, the, the problem of pain or suffering is atheism's most potent weapon against the Christian faith. It's sort mm. of this one kind of target. Well, if God is so good, why would he allow bad things to happen? If he's either he's all good and but not all sovereign or yeah. he's all sovereign but not all good. And <laughs> you get ourselves in these these warped games. But it's really us trying to wrap our finite yeah. minimal brain around the sovereignty of God. Like, good luck. Wild. Good luck trying to figure that out. I listened out. to a two and a half hour debate yesterday with an atheist and a Catholic on the existence of God. Yeah. And it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. You just, I mean, at the end of the day, there's some things we will be able to understand and yeah. some things we can grapple with, with yeah. our mind, but there's other things we'll just never fully yeah. understand. And all, all of that atheistic worldview comes down to suffering. Yeah. That's their constant battle. Mm-hmm. Um, but, they don't have a biblical worldview of it, which uh, shapes how we view it. Yeah. And ultimately, we kind of said, really, ultimately, we need a new perspective. And our, our ultimately, when it comes to suffering, or when it comes to hardships, or when it comes to identity, when it comes to warfare, whatever, it, we, we need heaven's perspective. We yeah. need a different perspective. We need, And ultimately, we have a faulty perspective. Mm-hmm. And so we, how do we see... How do we allow ourselves to separate from our situation enough to allow God to heal and change our perspective? And yeah, yeah. The yeah. way I liken it is like driving down a dark road at night. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just again, it's it's not a complete illustration, but at least gives me some kind of perspective. It's like, hey, I'm not going to be able to see everything that's in front of me. Yeah, but I I can see enough to get me the next 
distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can don't, see where I need to I go. See can, where I need to go. Yeah. And if I if I just do if I go where I know I can go, what I see I can do, understand. By the time I get there, I'll be able to see a little bit further. Absolutely, bit further, absolutely. Right? And I may not fully understand all the peripheral, what's going on all around yeah. me, or, but I know where I need to go. And yeah. and, I, and God's word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Yeah. And meaning, it's it's illuminating kind of the next step. Yeah, lamps don't know? go miles and miles down you know, the road. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, they're talking about a candle a lot of times. You know, it's yeah. like just enough to light what you need to see. Yeah. And I think that's and that's that faith. I mean, all throughout Scripture, Jesus, even the the manna in the wilderness, was like enough for the day. Yeah, enough for the day. Yeah, because I need you to come back to me, come back yeah. to me, trust in me, rely on me. And I think, you know, all throughout Scripture, that is how um, the relationship with God is meant to be. It's not a dependency in the sense that like God needs us to to. No, it's it's this sense of intimacy. This I need you to just trust me with the today. Trust me with the moment. You yeah. don't see. What I see, and if you saw what I see, you may not be able to get there because you're yeah. going to be overwhelmed with it all. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. just trust me with the next day. Trust yeah. me with the next step. And so, really, what we just tried to do is just reveal some points of light. You know that God didn't create evil and suffering, but yeah. that's that's a result of our fallen nature. Like right. ultimately, I know that's a. It feels can it can feel like a cop out kind of answer. It's like, well, God didn't create it, but his potential. He created the potential for evil because he created free will. Right. And because God wanted us to. God wanted us to love him freely. Yeah. He had to give us the free will to choose not to love him. Absolutely. Otherwise it wouldn't be love. It would just be robotic. Robotic. It, you know. Yeah. AI. And so so because he gave us the free will to choose to love him in return to his great love for us, within that also comes to choose the choice not to love him. Yeah. And ultimately, as we see through the fallen the fallen nature of humanity is that many have chosen not to love him Mm -hmm. and in so doing so they reap the consequences of their actions which then brings in the moral evil and natural evil yeah there's there's a cause and effect to our actions yeah and unfortunately while there are some people who love to look at the benefit look at the benefit of others there's others who do not they look at how they can hurt and harm and you know move ahead on top of others yeah and so you know we get that and then you know you stack thousands of years on top of that you have this cult, just basically this moral effect, this natural effect of cause yeah. and effect yeah. uh, that we are now grappling with. Yeah, and it's the fallen nature of our world. Yeah, geographically, um, you know, natural disaster wise, disease, yeah. all of it is a cause of sin. And I, it's funny. I used to believe that. I used to believe that innately, people are good. Like I know it's like I just I just wanted to believe that. Like I yeah, wanted yeah, to believe yeah. that the people who are in charge of leading me or mm-hmm. things like that. Like everyone's doing it because they're trying to serve others yeah, and for yeah, the yeah. benefit of others. Genuine people. pure motives. Genuine pure motives. And yeah, we make mistakes along the way. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. know, and that's, <laughs> but I mean, scripture is very clear. That's not the truth. No. You know, that the heart is the root of all kinds of evil yeah. and that there is nobody good wicked and deceitful at best. At best. And, and really ultimately, you know, people seek out power and authority and yeah. they, and they, they, then they hold and fight to hold that. So, Evil is a part of that, you know, but then we also know that while suffering isn't good, God can use it to create good, that God uses yeah. it for our good and yeah. uses it to draw people to himself and yeah. to discipline us and to strengthen yeah. our character. And there's lots of things where suffering is, while God doesn't cause the suffering, he uses the suffering for his good and for his benefit. Absolutely. And so we can see that throughout scripture. So we talked about that and, you know, we talked about how suffering also, um, let me just look at my notes here real quick, how suffering uh, the, our present suffering will also compare what uh, it will pale will pale in comparison yeah and i was actually just talking to someone this so morning powerful. who's going through uh surgery getting ready for go surgery and you know she's saying I, I believe in a god of miracles i believe god can heal me and i believe that god whether he wants to heal me in a moment or yeah. whether he wants to heal me through medicine yeah, you know yeah, through, yeah. through the process I, I will be healed but as we were talking we we're like we have such a short term perspective on healing mm-hmm because ultimately, all of us will be healed, mind, body, soul, and strength as we come into the fullness of God. Absolutely. As we enter into heaven, we will be completely healed and yeah. completely made new. Yeah. And when we say God is the healer, we're not saying that God is a healer only in this world and in this lifetime. Yeah. No, God is like one day we will all be healed. One day all will be made new. One day all will be made right and all yeah. will be healed by the grace of God. Yeah. Um, not and just so, humanity either. All creation, all creation, the earth, it'll be perfect, totally and so redeemed. What we are facing and what we experience in this temporal existence, which I know feels like everything. Yeah. Um, 
will one day pale. And it's how it's how Peter, I mean, it's how Paul can talk about our light and momentary troubles. Like a mm. guy who had been suffered lashes five different times to yeah. like one, you know, 40 lashes on his back, 39 lashes, whipped his back's in shreds. Can you, I just can't imagine what his back looked like. No. Like when you're talking about like the scarring. Yeah. Like I can't imagine what his, his back, his body looked like. Yeah. Beaten, bloody pulp with rods three times, imprisoned and shift wrecked. Like this guy yeah. suffered immense pain more than most of us would ever could ever even could ever even we can't even think about it but he had a he was able to sort of separate from the moment and to get an eternal perspective yeah and um and it's i heard, i saw this video on, on online this morning and it just kind of made me struck a cut it's like you know we believe that hey god loves you and he wants he wants the best life for you god loves you and wants the best life for you and this is sort of our western language of god loves you and wants the best life for you and we interpret that as a life of no suffering no pain of yeah. success of wealth right. of happiness and blessing yeah but what do you think about stephen where god loves the apostle stephen the first you know one of these the first disciples yeah. first martyr and he wanted his best friend but his best friend was to be martyred yeah or god loved peter but his best friend was that he was going to be killed be crucified up, upside down or god loved paul but his best life for paul was to be used as an example and be beheaded be headed <laughs> you know like at the end of his life his god loved them and he loved and he wanted the best life for him but his best life for them was that it would continue the message of the gospel of grace yeah um it wasn't that they would be live prosperous health blessed financially you know stable lives yeah. is that they would be used for the gospel of god yeah the best life is that they would be used to proclaim and um advance the gospel of christ yeah and so you know we have such a westernized philosophy when mm -hmm. it comes to the antithesis of suffering yeah. you know like blessing yeah it's like no no a blessed life absolutely isn't necessarily like a wealthy healthy yeah you know everything is good life yeah, 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 no, yeah. A blessed life is that you're living in the in the will of god yeah you know which is walking through suffering which is not suffering. exclusively but absolutely and jesus tells it like you're you're gonna experience trouble yeah and in fact, if you're not, and he says, and you have to die to yourself daily. Yeah. And if you don't die to yourself daily and pick up your cross, well, you're not even worthy yeah. to be a disciple. And then the disciples who are persecuted count, it, count themselves wor uh, uh, blessed that they even count, I became worthy to yeah. suffer alongside of Christ. Yeah. Um, if we join, therefore, in his sufferings, there will we would join in his glorious yeah. resurrection. So I think it's just this idea of like, how do we get a different perspective on suffering? That, yeah, suff obviously nobody likes suffering. We know that all things aren't good. But we do know that God is good in all things and that God can use good if we allow him for his glory. And he is using it in yeah. real time for his church and for the world. Yeah. For different reasons, obviously, which we can get to, which you communicated very well through, you know, um, you know what, how God uses suffering in mm -hmm. and through us, which yeah. is very a great reframing, specifically in like that God uses suffering to draw people towards Christ. 100%. Like, I mean, I, absolutely. Like, I don't, you know, most people don't turn to Jesus unless there's a need to. Right. right. What's the first thing people do in a crisis? Christian, non Christian. Can you pray? Pray. Pray. Right away. Yeah. And so it just opens to people's heart. I love Rick Warren, Rick, Rick Warren's pastor, Saddleback Church, uh, purpose driven life author. And when his son committed suicide, his son struggled with mental illness and committed suicide. And mm. he kind of talked about the six responses to suffering that he obviously now is experiencing in real time. Yeah. And was that book written in response to that situation? Not the purpose driven life, but okay. this this um this isn't from the purpose driven life. This is he I just he wrote the purpose driven. Right. I just kind of context who sure. he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this was in uh, another writing he wrote. Okay. Um and he was talking about how we there's the six responses when we go through suffering. And the first is we go through shock. Mm -hmm. All of us go through this where we wonder like what the heck happened? Yeah. You know, like what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then we go through sorrow where we wonder like how did this happen? Mm -hmm. And then we go through struggle where we, we wonder, like, why did this happen? Yeah. And, I mean, every one of us, if you've experienced any sort of suffering, those are, those are the first three human can, reactions. Absolutely. You know, we go through shock, sort of struggle. What happened? How did this happen? Why did this happen? And as I've discovered, a lot of people, most people, that's where they stay. They just sort of stay there. And they become victims of the struggle. They become victims of the situation. And they never, ever move on. A lot of people have breakdowns. And they just sort of like their life almost ceases to exist, depending on what the situation is. Absolutely. And I would imagine a, a parent losing a child to, to suicide could yeah. be one of those moments. It happens all the time. Um, but, but Rick Warren basically says there is another way. And he says, you know, you can move to surrender 
where it's like, hey, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it happened. I don't understand all that, but I'm choosing to trust God with it. Mm-hmm. Like, and and I mean that that's not just an easy statement. Like that takes time to get to that moment. Yeah. But I choose to trust God with it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna there's in the sanctification part where I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna what is God teaching me through it? Where can I learn through this? Yeah. And then there's a service part is how can I how can God redeem it? How am I allowing God to redeem it? Yeah. And use it. And this is where again all things work together for good for those who love and called according to his purposes. It's when you get to this place where you're allowing God to redeem it, where yeah. you're allowing God to use it. Because not everyone gets to that. Some people just stop at the struggle. And yeah. yeah, it's hard for God to use that because you're not giving him the permission to use it. Absolutely. Um, but when you can allow him to use it. And so, yeah, while we can't control what happens to me, with God's help, we can choose our response. And so yeah. how are we going to respond through suffering? And uh, and as I've discovered, you know, in my life, and again, I haven't, we've, I think my suffering is pretty mod- moderate compared to some. Like I haven't really had any sort of life trauma yeah. altering experience that I know some people have, but I've discovered that a faith that can't be shaken is a faith that has been shaken. Like as yeah. you go through the shaking process and you're able to work through those, especially the, the last three sections of yeah. surrender, sanctification, and service, you develop a faith that can't be shaken. So when another thing happens or the other storm comes, you yeah. realize my life is built on the solid rock. Yeah. And the storms are going to come and go, but my faith will not be shaken. Yeah, it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. I, I remember very, you know, people talk about church hurt and all that kind of stuff. But being in church, you kind of welcome it, especially in ministry sometimes. And there was one situation in my life that obviously does not compare to persecution or suffering or anything like that. But it was very painful. Um, and it took me a very long time to get to that surrender part. Right. Too long. Yeah. But it taught me great maturity to be able to now have a framework, like you're saying, for when, when the next hit comes, because it will come. Yeah, I know. I genuinely know how to walk through this mm-hmm. because it's been tested. I, mm-hmm. I, I've did it really poorly last time, and it took way too long. Right, right. But now I have a pretty good understanding of how to walk through it. Does that mean it's not going to hurt? No, of course not. It's still going to hurt. But I know how to walk through the yeah. process, cool. um, and that's I'm thankful. I. I got to a point where I'm thankful that that happened to me. Yeah. You also realize that there is there is light on the other side. There is life and joy and hope on Absolutely. the other side of that. And so, you know, going through it the first time, it's like walking through a cave where you don't know there's an exit on the other side. So no. you're like nervous. You just want to get out. You're breaking you're, down. You're shying away. Right? It's just a disaster. But you go through that again. You're like, oh, I know there's, I know the light's on the other side. Absolutely. And yeah, well, I'm a little bit, I don't really know how, what the next corner is going to look like. I know I can get through this thing. I've done Absolutely. it before. Absolutely. And, um, and I think that's where the hope comes in, right? And, we, and again, the closer we get to Christ, the more we realize that he lights our path, directs our step, never leaves us, nor forsake us. We can yeah. say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Yeah. You know, and so there we get to this place where we have this assurance, not in our situation, but who is with us in the struggle. You yeah. Know? And, and, um, and that's been great. So real quickly, I think the, the thing that I've been wrestling with, and, and you know, I just kind of landed it on this question, is instead of is flip the question, is instead of asking the question like why does a good God allow bad things to happen? Yeah, um, I just started thinking about this thought like why does a good God allow good things to happen? Yeah, like if we believe that God is all good and all sovereign and all holy, yeah, then why does He allow anything good to happen to us? Because yeah. we and ourselves deserve nothing but the wrath of God. Yeah, we and ourselves deserve nothing but God's judgment. Um. And so, you know, when we ask the question the other way, we still think that the problem is somehow out there and not internal. Yeah. We still think that we are good enough to deserve something other than the wrath of God. Yeah. Inter- intrinsically. Right. And then we, we get frustrated that how dare God not, to, uh, you know, you know uh, employ his power on behalf of sort of almighty men. Like yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, believe yeah. sort of in our sovereignty and our our ultimate perspective of what's good and right and yeah you know just and and maybe you wouldn't even think like that but you could think but isn't god for me Mm -hmm. like doesn't he do things for me right isn't he (laughs) sort of like the genie in the bottle no it's quite the opposite yeah you're for god he's not for you (laughs) like he's for you in the sense like he believes in you he loves you he's championing you but you're a piece of the master not the other way around 100 percent and yep. he's using you, using suffering, whatever it might be, using blessing, whatever it might look like, because you belong to him, not yeah. the other way around. Yeah. And this is the reality. I think this again, this is just a, a dose of um, perspective that all of us need to keep in awareness of is that 
Every good and perfect gift comes from God the Father, and we deserve not, none of it. Not so every, every blessing that we get is really based on the grace of God. Amen. Period. Amen. Nothing that we've earned, nothing that we deserve. And so really when it comes down to suffering, I'm actually more mystified about the mercy of God so good right like that the mercy of god is more of a mystery to me yeah than the problem of pain yeah because to me i i i understand yeah we're sinful i i just look at myself like i don't even have to worry about you i don't have to worry about anything. i just look at myself and i realize yeah no i have to rustle through the yeah. sinful nature in me that is so selfish that is so me-centric yeah um that wants to uh, dance on the backs of other yeah. people like, of course they're suffering. The of world. course they're suffering. Like, have you met yourself? And so the fact that God would still choose to use me and bless me yeah. and provide for me and be good to me and kind to me and bestow love to me, yeah, like that mystifies me. And I pray I will never, that will never leave That's me. That's really special. Because I think that... It's really beautiful. The, mystif- the mystery of mercy... Um, keeps me tender to the to the cross, right? It keeps you it keeps you soft, it keeps you pliable. As soon as you feel like you earned it or you deserved it or somehow it's rightfully yours, I think that creates a gap between us and God, or our heart becomes hardened. Yeah, you know? haven't I been so good? Yeah. <laughs> and so, to me, I think from if you know, and whether I did it or not, I landed the plane or not, it's just like how can we th- how can we get heaven's perspective on suffering yeah it's beautiful so much so that it's not really about suffering it's actually about the mercy of god that god yeah god is so good and he is so sovereign and he's able to and he's willing to so much so that he sent his one and only son jesus to die on the cross he he the problem of pain is not uh is is a needed more than just um it needed more just a natural solution it needed like the incarnation of god like we didn't need uh, an explanation of like why God, no, he, we need the incarnation of God. Like Christ came down into our pain, into our suffering to show us the way out. It's like, you know, I, I, I often think about that story. I think it was in South America where all these kids were trapped in a cave mm. and they couldn't find the way out. There was mm. no way to get out. And so the only way for them to get out was that m- people had to go into the cave yeah, and, and show them the way out and carry them out. Yeah. Um, that's the only way they could get out. And Christ did that. He didn't just, hey, this is the way out, and yell it from heaven. No, yeah, he yeah, came yeah. into the pain. He came, he put himself into the problem. Yeah. And 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 did it in a way that created the way out for us. Yeah. And um, and so, you know, I think that per suffering is a personal problem and it demands a personal response. And yeah. thankfully we have a God who's so personal, who so loves us so much as we are, but loves us too much to leave us where we are. That's so good. That he comes into our personal problem and shows us the way out. And so Amen. if you're going through suffering today, you know, I get the shock, I get the struggle, I get the sorrow. But my question is, will you surrender it? Will you allow God to sanctify it? Amen. And will you use it for a service? I agree. And if you can do that, then I believe you can, you can, you can hold on to Romans eight twenty eight. That yes. All things work together for good for those who Amen. love him and call them according to his purpose. When you allow him to use your suffering and to use your sorrow, to use your shock for his glory. Mm-hmm. And he will. He will do it. And he has done it. And if you trust in him, the faith that has been shaking right now will not be shaking in the future. Yeah. And so that's the hope we hold on to. Very good. Very good. What an encouragement. Thank you for joining us for Sunday Encore today. We pray that this sparks Jesus-centered conversations in your home or small groups as we continue to grow into an overflowing relationship with Jesus.